Hey everybody, it's Halo 4 Tutor with another Halo 4 gameplay commentary. As always, you know you're going to get my signature tips and tricks to help you start winning more often and having a lot more fun while you're doing it. I'm all fired up today because I have a fantastic game to share with you. This is on the map Ragnarok. Uh, I go 19 kills, 1 death, and uh, a big team battle game of course. And if you ever go into the big team battle playlist, this is a fan favorite. It always gets voted in. So I haven't had the chance to bring you one of these gameplays yet. Um, and, you know, I like to spread the love around with all the different maps so you can see how I approach all the different maps in their own unique ways. Because you have to have a unique strategy, a unique approach for every map because they're all just a different animal. They all play out differently. You can't approach them all the same with just a run and gun mentality. You have to have a plan. And you need to have a different plan for every map. And so that's why I'm trying to show you all the different maps so you can get an idea how I approach it. Maybe get some ideas for your own gameplay. Um, I know that I've brought you a lot of big team battle games recently. That's because it's my favorite playlist. I do very well in this playlist. Uh, but I promise I'll bring you more traditional Infinity Slayer games uh, very, very shortly in the next couple days. So if you uh, are looking for traditional Infinity Slayer games, go to my channel. I already have a bunch there waiting for you. If you've already seen all those, make sure that you've subscribed, and I have several more to come in the next couple days, so just keep your eyes peeled, and I, I really appreciate your loyal subscription. Um, so let me just talk a little bit about uh, uh, Ragnarok here and how to approach it, because it's different than any other any other big team map. Um, you know, some of the other big ones, like Exile, which is very popular, or Longbow, or others, they're, they're fairly circular. Exile especially is very circular. And so the, the battle and the action flows very uh, smoothly and players can kind of move around the map quite a bit and there's no one area necessarily where there's a lot of, of, of intense action going on. It, it's kind of spread out and everything flows. But in, in Valhalla, that's real, or Ragnarok Valhalla from Halo 3, uh, that's really not the case. It, it's a very linear map and it's very enclosed. So you know exactly what's going to happen. It plays out almost the exact same every game. What happens is the, the blue players spawn at the beach and the red players spawn at the waterfall and you respawn in those areas and everybody just keeps crushing on the center. Okay, Everybody just keeps crushing towards the middle and that's where all the encounters occur. So you need to be able to control the center of the map and more so here than any other map. Okay. It's, it's very important to do that here. Now, I, I really recommend that you approach that, that uh, concept differently whether, depending on whether you're the red spawn or the blue spawn. Because the red spawn, you can actually sit on the hill and control it with a team effort, okay? If you work together as a team, you can really control the center hill by literally sitting on the hill and shooting at the blue players as they try to rush, okay? So you can do that. Now, the blue players, it's a little bit more difficult. Look at that. Got my ordnance going already. Some nice head shooting with the DMR. I'm all out of ammunition. Fortunately, I have the uh, ordnance drop. Come over here to the other side where it's a little safer. Grab this binary rifle, which is a fantastic weapon, by the way. And what do I do right away? Grab this weapon, scope in, and get sniped in the head. So, mixed blessing here. I actually respawn in the base just as the Spartan sniper is spawning. So I grab that, go back for my beam right or my binary rifle. It's still there. So now I have two snipers in a great location, active camo, armor ability efficiency as my upgrade, and I've got ammo as my uh, my support upgrade and my armor ability AA efficiency as tactical package. So what all that means is I've got active camo, which is great for sniping, especially on a big map. I've got the ammo. Uh, package which gives me additional ammunition for my snipers so I have like more sniper ammunition than I know what to do with my I've got my active camouflage and then my AA efficiency is allowing my active camo to recharge very very quickly and so it's all just working for me right now so you're gonna see I go on a killing frenzy start with this double kill right here oh look at that second shot that player's leaping through the air just snipe him right out of midair that's a very satisfying play You'll see, uh, keep an eye out, I'm going to get another double kill here, uh, another solid shooting. Get the, the first shot here in a second. Uh, where is that? The, here's the first shot, and then the second shot, I'm going to get a head case. This guy's sprinting across the river, and bam! Very rewarding shot. Um, 
So with the, the blue players, I was trying to talk about controlling the center area, which you want to do uh, re regardless of which team you're on. And you can control the center area as the blue players without actually going into the middle. So this rock is a very advantageous point in the map, okay? It's a very powerful position because you can shoot at the red players as they camp out at the top of the hill. Because those red players, what they want to do is they want to sit at the crest of the hill and just kind of peek out and shoot at you as you're trying to approach the hill. It's a very effective method. But you can keep them at bay from this rock with a sniper, but you don't have to have a sniper. You can use a DMR or a battle rifle from here. Uh, it's very effective and and uh, certainly within range of those weapons. Um, also, the down pelican, you saw me earlier in the game doing a lot of business from the pelican. And a little later in the game, I'm going to push up to that point. And so that's also a very good position to control the center area because from the pelican... There, you can actually, you have a great view of that little field where all the red players are going to land. They go, you know, the red players are going to spawn in the base, guaranteed. They're not even thinking. They're just running and gunning. They're going to jump through the lift. It's going to land right in that little field at the base of the hill, and you can just shoot them up with uh, any weapon you have from the down pelican. So the pelican is another great position. So when I talk about controlling the center area, as the blue players, you can do that from the pelican here area. You can do that from here. And sometimes you can do it from the top of the hill, but it's a little challenging. Uh, on the other side, as the red players, you, you probably want to try to control the hill as much as possible uh, directly. And I'm going to do another video some other time, you know, from the red perspective. But the other thing I want to talk about here is um, just my, my, my gameplay approach in general. Watch this. The binary rifle, I hit this guy in the elbow and, oh, one shot kill. I love the binary rifle because, frankly, my, my markmanship is either average to below average, to be honest with you. And uh, so I love the binary rifle because it's a one-shot kill. You know, it doesn't matter if you hit the guy in the toe, in the knee, in the elbow. That's a one-shot kill with the binary rifle, and it doesn't get any better than that. Now, I still have plenty of ammunition in both snipers, and so I'm looking to use those up before I, I deploy my ordnance drop here. So once I've used up all my sniper rounds, then I'm going to go back to the base and I'm going to use my ordnance drop. And I, I gave this tip away in another video, but in case you haven't seen it, let me just elaborate what I do with the ordnance drops. You know, they're very conspicuous if you do them out in the open. And right now, obviously, I'm using the active camo. Oh, watch this. I get a nice elbow shot with the binary rifle. Another one-shot kill. Get that guy right out of the ghost. Then I hijack the Banshee. I'm not sure what happens. I hijack it. It blows up. I don't know what happened there. Maybe a teammate shot it down. But with the ordnance drops, I'm trying to be sneaky here. I don't want this big, notorious ordnance to fall from the sky and give away my position. And I definitely don't want somebody coming over here and trying to steal the, my power up or my power weapon. So I come indoors and it just materializes very quietly right in front of my, my face. I can grab my weapon and go back out. So if you have an opportunity, if you're trying to be discreet, uh, you know, consider deploying your ordnance indoors, okay? It's it's much more discreet, and it's not going to attract a lot of attention. So, uh, let me see what else I was uh, talking about here. Oh, yeah, my play style. So, yeah, what I was going to say is that, you know, my markmanship is, is average to below average, maybe. I realize my skill set is average to below average, right? Um, I'm, I'm honestly not that good of a player. If all things are equal, um, if, if I'm in a one-on-one... -on -one battle with an opponent and all things are equal we have the same weapons there's no cover um, it's just one-on-one -on -one situation I'm probably gonna lose most of those one-on-one -on -one encounters if all things are equal because my skill set's just not that good and I realize that oh look at that binary rifle go to work absolutely fantastic weapon if you haven't picked this bad boy up make sure to do so be careful not to stay scoped in for long though because it broadcasts your position you can't tell when you're scoped in but anytime you use the binary rifle with the scope, this beam of light extends out. Oh, look at that. That elbow. Get the guy in the elbow. One shot. Kill. Can't go wrong. This is a bad boy weapon. I love it. Um, but but anyway, see right now I'm broadcasting out a beam of light. So anyone on the map knows exactly where I am. So you don't want to stay scoped in for more than two or three seconds. you got to scope in, take the shot, get out of the scope as quickly as possible. Especially like if you're in active camo like I am. But uh, because my skill set is so average to below average, and I truly believe that, I have to find situations or create situations where I have other advantages because my skills aren't going to be the advantage. 
I have to come up with other ways that I can have an advantage. So, for example, I'm looking for uh, I'm looking to come into the battle with a better weapon than my opponent, or I want to surprise my opponent, or I want to uh, be in a more powerful position on the map than my opponent. You have to play very smart. And the reason I'm talking about this is I know a lot of you are like semi-pro players. You've been playing forever, and you're very, very good. A lot of my friends are fantastic and kick my butt all the time when I play against them. But, you know, if you feel like, you you know, you have average to below average skills, that doesn't mean that you have to lose a lot of games, okay? You can still be very successful and still win a ton of games if you play smart, okay? You have to find ways to, to gain an advantage over your opponents other than just your, your uh, raw skill set, okay? You want to work on your skill set, no doubt about it, okay? You want to work on your marksmanship, you want to work on your strafing, you want to work on all those things, but you also want to look for situations where you can come in with a better weapon, be in a more powerful position, and surprise your opponents. If you do those things, you can really uh, take out a lot of players who may be much better than you, but you can win a lot of games that way. So, hope you guys picked up a few tips and tricks along the way. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Add this video to your favorites. Thanks for watching. Halo 4 Tutor, signing out. I'll see you next time.